Michael Morris, Your Honor, next to me, to my right. Okay. All right. Just well, okay. Um, uh, Mr. Okay, Ms. Benedict. So I see I have uh, I have you up here. We're getting to that one. And then um, are you Mr. Sarnowski? Okay, and the individual behind you, what is your name? Brian Hanya. Oh, that's right. Okay. I, you look familiar, but okay, you're here just for this other matter. Okay. I just want to make sure we have everybody checked in and accounted for. All right. All right, so let's go on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Michael Morris, 232434. And Detective Sable, your name for the record, please. Detective Steve Sable, Your Honor. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you saw me swear from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. You may proceed on the warrant. Thank you, Your Honor. On 1121 of 2023 at approximately 1231 in the morning, Mr. Morris was driving his unregistered white 2012 Buick vehicle at a reckless high rate of speed by his own mission over 100 miles per hour in the city of Wyandotte, County of Wayne and the state of Michigan. And that would be the area of Goddard and Fort Street. Officer Grote, uh, saw the violation of the reckless driving, uh, pursued the vehicle into the city of Lincoln Park, where the vehicle stopped. Mr. Morris had a stolen license plate on the vehicle that he admitted during a recorded interview that he placed on it. It was lean entered as stolen, uh, admitted to the reckless driving in excess of 100 miles an hour. He also knows and admits that he was driving on a suspended or revoked license and also had an open alcohol uh, container in the vehicle. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Pat, I'm usually complaining. When does that find that the offenses charged were committed, defendant? And there's probable cause that the defendant committed those offenses. All right, and, and counsel, your appearance, please. Good morning, Richard P. Serrano, P3-3828. I'm here today on behalf and with my client, who is presently in custody, and uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, I am appearing for that purpose only to bring the purpose for it. I wait for the reading standing. I right, thank you, Mr. Morris. Your name, please, for the record. Michael Morris. All right, and the court um, will waive the formal reading. Sir, you have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Correct. You also have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a, re beyond a reasonable doubt. You also have the right to be to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights? I understand. All right, the court's going to ask if we have not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for probable cause conference on November 30th at 9.30 a.m. The court has also signed the petition and an appointment for a court-appointed attorney. And counsel as to bond. Uh, Your Honor, as to bond, my client tells me, and I'm not privy to everything uh, on his criminal history, but he tells me he's not currently on probation or parole. Uh, he is uh, single, he, he has two children, and uh, Your Honor, he uh, works uh, seasonal construction. Uh, nothing pending, he tells me. His criminal history looks, from my examination, to be just minor traffic matters. But uh, Your Honor, uh, we hope the court would consider a personal bond, if not a bond you can really expect to post. Okay, and um, Captain, would you like to address that? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Um, I would ask the court honorably to um, have no driving stipulation for Mr. Morris, no alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed to him, and a, a meager 10,010% or a $1,000 cash bond because of the felony charges. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, Well, Your Honor, in response, uh, I was just the, the felony charge, although a felony is not one involving crime of violence or any victims per se. 
asking us to consider either a lower bond or a personal bond. Client does this. Is able to post, he thinks, $500. So the court alters that amount. Who's the other individual that's in there? Pardon me, Your Honor? Who's the other individual that's in custody? Is the one Mr. that Smith? I interviewed, Your Honor? Is this Mr. Smith that's in there? No, I have an no. item of Johnston. Okay, that's fine. All right, sir, and um, you're not on police or parole anywhere, sir? No. And so how do you support yourself in the off season? Um, I collect unemployment. Um, well, I did last year. I collected unemployment, but uh, this year I'm not financially where I need to be. So I'm probably going to find another job in the meantime. Have you ever failed to appear in court for any reason, sir? Um, not that I, not that I know of. I mean, I, if I did, I did take care of it. I did go and you know turn myself in, you know, because I think there was one matter uh, that I missed court, but I did go and uh, take care of it. All right, given the nature of the charges and the um, danger that the community has been placed in as a result of these allegations, the court's going to order a $7,500, 10% bond. You're not to drive, sir, no driving. So wherever you have to go, if you, if you got any post bond, you need to make sure that you are not the one driving. Yes, ma'am. Not to possess too many alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. And in fact, sir, you don't even have a valid license to drive. No, you're not. Yeah, you no know, business driving to begin with. The court's going to also order a GPS tether through the Wayne County Jail. That way we can keep an eye and monitor you to make sure that you are not, in fact, driving a vehicle. So, all right, we'll see you back on November 30th. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. All right. And Detective, is this also yours, Mr. Johnson? Okay, we're on the record. Okay, 231618. And Detective, your name for the record, please. Detective Devin Geiger, Wyandotte Police Department. All right, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear for the testimony box in this matter, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Sorry? I do. Okay, thank you. It didn't come through. All right, you may proceed on the board. This agency was contacted by a Mr. Ronald Cox from 3R Home Improvement. Um, it was reported to by Mr. Cox that a former employee named Adam Bradley Johnston reportedly had access to credit cards and uh, financial uh, records for the agency or the company and uh, made unauthorized purchases. It is reported that in all a location located at 18799 Ford Street in Riverview, uh, zip code 48193, location of the Lowe's at 16410 Trent Road, Southgate, Michigan, 48195, location of a Home Depot at 3163 Fairlane Boulevard in Allen Park, zip code 48101, the location of Home Depot West Branch, Cook Road, West, uh, um, zip code 48661, location of Home Depot, 28, uh, 25879 Hoover Road in Warren, Michigan, zip code 48089, location of Home Depot, 23300 West Allen Road, uh, Woodhaven, Michigan, 48183 zip code, and, and finally, home, location of Home Depot at 20300 Kelly Road, Harper Woods, Michigan, 48225. In total, Mr. Cox reports that a, uh, unauthorized purchases at Speedway tallied up to $7,156.51. Uh, at the Home Depot locations, $3,000, And then at the Lowe's location, $1,470.98 for a grand total of $11,902.69. Uh, of fraudulent purchases were made. Um, uh, 
surveillance footage at all these locations was collected and Mr. Johnson was observed on all the footage uh, making these transactions. Uh, attempt to make contact with Mr. Johnson, uh, he, he chose not to cooperate with this investigation. That is it, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Oh. And I apologize, I'm sorry. to go through that again, Detective. I've already signed this warrant. Um, yes, I know. So, sorry about that. All right, and so, Mr. Johnson, uh, please yes, stand up and counsel your appearance for the record. Your Honor, good afternoon. Richard T. Serrano, P3382, appearing on behalf of Mr. Johnson, presently in custody. I appear today for a range of purposes only, Your Honor, advising him of his rights and each of the charges against him, thereby with way for where he can Sir, your name for the record, please. Adam Johnston, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N. All right, sir, the court's going to waive the formal reading. You do have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint one to represent you. In fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a drug by a jury, and also the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right, the courts are going to enter clear. Not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for probable cause conference, November 30th at 9.45 a.m. And counsel asked to, and the court has also signed the petition in order for court appointed attorney in this matter. Asked to bond counsel. Your Honor, my client tells me he's not on probation or parole, nothing pending in a criminal nature. Uh, at one time, he was on parole for a felony, which he successfully completed that parole. That was about eight years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. He is single. He supports one minor child, and he works full time for Down River Glass and Block. <clears throat> Your Honor, uh, I was speaking to him. Uh, money is certainly an issue with him, but. Uh, we would ask the court to consider either a personal bond or a bond he can read through his record post. Uh, he is uh, possibly going to hire his own attorney, but I appreciate the court appointing him a lawyer in case he is not able to finance to do that. That, Your Honor, will leave it in the court's discretion, either a personal bond or a bond he can read through his record post. Thank you. All right, sir, where is it? Um, who do you live with in Albany? I live with uh, my two roommates. Uh, I work with uh, my one roommate and his wife lives with us. And so um, on your matter from 2008, how much time did you serve in prison, sir? Um, a little over, I believe, seven years, ma'am. I'm not exactly sure the exact amount of time. Try to forget it, sorry. Are you currently out on bond in any other jurisdiction? I don't know what that means. Do you have any other pending matters, sir? Oh, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. I apologize. Is that to Geiger as to bond? Just to assure his presence in court, he, there's several charges here. I think of the 15 felony count charges here. And uh, additionally, he had a habitual offender third offense notice on here, just to assure his presence in court, 50,000, 10%, and GPS tether to the fact that we had to go out and search for Mr. Uh, Johnston and do surveillance and locate him and arrest him because he failed to appear. I'm sorry, Your Honor, when did he fail to appear? Well, he was he was mailed a summons on August 11th. He was ordered to have been here on September 7th, and he failed to appear. This court should have warned that on October 12th. I'm unaware of that myself. I'm unaware of that myself. Well, sir, we sent it to your uh to the trailer that you already that you put on your advice of your um request for court appointed attorney. No, no, ma'am. I I get I check my mail every day after work. I no, ma'am. Absolutely not. I, I would not have, I wouldn't be going through this right now. I would have already started this process if I'd known this was the case. I wouldn't have not Detective, come to court. I, I got a stunt. Detective, was there, hey, yeah, Detective, was there any um, communication or attempted communication with Mr. Johnson? 
just during the investigation, Your Honor. Yeah, he chose not to cooperate at that point. So we, no, after that, after the warrant was authorized, no. All right, well, Mr. Johnson, you knew that there was an investigation going on, correct? I, I'm, I'll, to be honest with you, ma'am, I had an idea, but I didn't know exactly what it was. Uh, I was told by the, uh, the attorney standing in the courtroom not to discuss anything today, but there's a lot more to it than just that. All right, well, here's the concern of the court. The concern of the court is that you have 15 charges. You have 15 counts. You also have a habitual offender third offense notice, which now increases your penalty on these matters if you're convicted to potentially twice the maximum sentence. So what the court's going to do is the court's going to order for the safety of the public as well as the uh, complaining witnesses in this matter and to ensure your presence back in court since um, you did not appear in court and given your criminal history, the court's going to order a $35,000 10% bond. The court's going to order the following bond condition, sir. You're not to have any contact or communication with anybody at the three R home improvement. That's current employees, owners, or otherwise. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. You understand that, sir? Yes, ma'am. You also are not to enter the premises at three R home improvement. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. And then you have know, the other the balance of the conditions on the back of your bond, your bond form here. Any questions? No, ma no ma'am. All right. Thank you. We'll see you back on November 30th. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Have a nice support uh, to the court, Your Honor. Thank you, me too. Thank you. And so let's go off the record for a moment. Um, all right, we are on the record in the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Jennifer Douglas, 232433. And appearance counsel? Your Honor, John Hope, P30758 on behalf of Ms. Douglas. All right, thank you, Ms. Douglas. Your name for the record, please. Jennifer Douglas. All right, thank you. And counsel, as to the arraignment. Your Honor, she was standing. She's been charged with one count of possession of controlled substance. She, I reviewed the charges with her. She was standing new to the charges, waive a formal reading of those charges, and ask the plea of not guilty to enter. The court will waive the formal reading, enter a plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. We will schedule this matter for a pretrial on December 5th. Yeah, 10.30 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, counsel asked to bond. Your Honor, at this time, uh, Ms. Douglas uh, does have one prior uh, drug uh, matter. It was a felony that was reduced to a possession, I believe. Uh, she spent uh, 365 days in jail, according to her self-reporting. Uh, she was released in July, I believe, of 2023. She has one child. She lives with her father, stepfather, and her mother in uh, the city of Wyandotte. Uh, she's 25 years old. At this time, she's unemployed. She is a high school graduate. I'm sorry. Uh, she, uh, she's a high school graduate uh, from Roosevelt. Uh, as I've indicated, she does have that one prior uh, incident. Uh, we'd ask for a personal bond in this particular matter due to her status that she's, she's unemployed. Uh, she wants to get this matter resolved uh, and we're asking for a personal bond in this particular. She has always, from what I understand, appeared on 
other matters. She did have a outstanding warrant, which well, that's why she was uh, incarcerated. She was in a vehicle with another individual. Officers recognized her. Then she would step down, made a check, being it was a warrant. And during the uh, processing for at this path on the street, the drugs were located in there. Uh, um, that's for a no insurance claim, she told me, uh, which she has not resolved yet, but will be taken care of when she. Well, just one more thing. So, June of 21. Your client had a felony dangerous drugs charge and another misdemeanor matter. And then January of 2023 <clears throat> is when she was sentenced. She was plugged and sentenced because it looks as though she wasn't charged until 2022. And so you were sentenced to 365 days in jail on January 31st, correct? Correct. Well, isn't that one year? Is that one year? Yeah. 365 days, one year? Yeah. Okay. So we are on November 22nd, and you're in, well, you're in custody, but you're not in the Wayne County Jail custody. When, did Correct, you, when were you released, ma'am? I was released uh, the, the like late July. You were ordered for a year in jail, and you were released after six months? I did. I was a trustee, so I got time off my sentence for good behavior. Well, man, yeah, you should probably try to continue that good behavior when you're out of custody. Yeah, you're right. You're right. For the most part, I, I haven't been using. So. Well, if you're a test today, what's in your system? I'm going to guess something. I'm sorry, what? What is in your system if you were to test today? Um, probably methamphetamines. It might be out of my system by now, though. When's the last time you used it? <clears throat> um, it was probably four days ago, four or five days ago. And you had a warrant out for your arrest out of Southgate, right? It's for a no insurance ticket. When I was in county, I tried doing a plea by mail, and they told me that they couldn't give me jail time. So I'm not sure. Okay. Well, man, you've been out of jail since the end of July, and you haven't taken care of it. You know it's there. I know. I just haven't had the money around it. Well, because you don't have a job. Why aren't you working? I have been applying for a lot of jobs on Indeed. I've been applying like crazy. Okay. Well, there's other locations that you can, I mean, where are you applying? Um, you can't get a job warehouse job. Mostly warehouse jobs. All right, uh, well, your client has a history of failing to appear. She just did time in jail for possession, and now here she is again. Actually, Your Honor, I don't. Possession was the original charge of felony. It was reduced to peace. Okay, drug, a drug related charge. Okay, sure. uh, clarify yeah, sure. that. Confusing. All right, well. Ms. Douglas, um, the court's going to order a $5,000 10% bond. It's actually a lot more for your safety and your sobriety. The court's going to order you're not to possess or consume alcohol or drugs unless prescribed in the event you post bond. I'll bring you to random testing. Okay. In the event you post bond. So what's my button? I'm sorry. I can't, I can't, I don't have my glasses on. I can't see anything. And you are to. And you are to submit 30 job applications per week, ma'am. Okay. You don't have to limit it to warehouses. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. okay. And so.